Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks, and in this video, I wanna share with you three tips that are gonna save you years. So if you focus on these things right now, you're gonna be really ahead of the game, and you're not gonna discover years down the road, uh-oh, I skipped these things where I should have been working on them all along. Before we get into it, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks, and if you wanna be notified of any new lesson, be sure to tap the bell, and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see in future lessons, that's where we're always looking for ideas. All right, let's get into it. The first tip is to focus on how you play the notes. Not the notes that you play, but how you play the notes. So this is the details of your phrasing and articulation. So your bending accuracy, your vibrato, how your pick is attacking the strings, slides, dynamics, the variation of loud and soft. So all the things that make a phrase really beautiful, right? Because let's think about singers. What separates a really great singer from a singer that's a little more forgettable? It's not necessarily the notes. Mo pretty much every professional singer can sing the notes. It's how they sing the notes, the details, the dynamics, the emotion behind it, right? The timbre, the phrasing. So what does that mean for a guitar player? So there's an interview on YouTube with Eric Clapton, long hair, like 1968, real young. And he talks about how it took him years just to develop his vibrato, just to be able to take a note and go, right? Just to get just to get the vibrato he was looking for. Or I think he bends a note, he goes, and he's talking about, you know, just the subtlety of his vibrato. That is the thing that he's, you know, most closely aware of is not necessarily the notes, but how he's playing those notes, right? If you're learning from Teb, Teb tells you nothing about what I'm talking about. Teb just says, put your note there. Maybe it says do vibrato, right? But it's just telling you to do that. How do you learn how to actually do that? Listening. So this ties in really well with listening. If you want to learn Let's say you want to be a good soloist, right? If you want to learn how to sound like a great soloist, you might think, okay, well, I think that I mentioned Eric Clapton. I think Eric Clapton's a great soloist. So as a beginner, you might say, so let me download the tab to his solo on Layla or something like that. And so you start reading the tab, which is just paint by numbers, right? There's the... The, the tab doesn't contain the music. It's just an abstraction, basically. So the best way is to listen to that solo, take it phrase by phrase, try to imitate it. If, you, if your ear training's not up there and you really can't make out what the notes are, maybe have the tab as a backup, right? If you find a reliable source for accurate tab, maybe. It's there if you need it. But even if it takes you 30 hours to learn by ear the solo versus reading it off tab in 20 minutes, those 30 hours are gonna catapult you years ahead because you're working on your ear training, you're working on the articulation, you're trying to match exactly what he's doing, right? Like a player like B.B. King, for instance, his vibrato and his bending accuracy and the way he bent and did vibrato was such a huge part of why people really connected with his playing. And that is all a direct, directly coming from his musical voice through his fingers into the guitar. It's not some sort of put your finger here and play this note. It's him singing to you. That's really what I'm saying is like, what are the details of making it sound like a singer? You know, the, the slides, the vibrato, the bends. What does it sound like to bend a half step versus a whole step, right? Let's say I want to bend this note to this note. a whole step to this note. Feel and hear the difference, right? Maybe slide to the note that you want first and then bend to it. So like... I 
just wanted to take a moment to say that if you want to learn more about these techniques that I'm talking about, head to guitartricks.com slash bending and vibrato, where we've compiled a lot of lessons related to these articulation techniques I'm talking about. And there at the website, you'll also find sequential courses on guitar fundamentals, blues, rock, country, a library of high quality song lessons, and so much more. The second tip I have is to work on your efficiency of movement. So I know this is something that I wish I worked on straight away. So I tend to have a heavy hand, use a lot more motion than I need. And it took for me to have a hand injury to really start working on using a lighter touch. And when you use a lighter touch, you could do more. You could go faster, you're more relaxed, you don't get fatigued as fast. So one thing is like, if you have an electric guitar, Try to practice plugged in because if you don't, you could barely hear it. And what ends up happening is you play really loud so that you could hear it. So try to let the amplifier do the work. So this kind of ties into the first tip where I talked about part of phrasing is dynamics. That's the variation between loud and soft. So whatever you're practicing, see how you could play it with the least movement as possible. So one thing you can do just on a single note is let's say I take the third fret of the... Uh, low E string. How soft can I press down and still get the note? Well, first of all, you want to always have your finger right behind the fret. So not deep into the fret, but right behind the fret wire. That requires the least effort. Keep playing the note real soft and gradually let go with your left hand until it starts to buzz. and then find that point. It, just through this activity, you are really creating a subtle awareness of pressure because you're like, you know, it's such a, you're really getting deep into the feeling of pressing the string on a subtle level. See, it starts to buzz, right? So you just find that spot. Now watch, if I pick harder, it will buzz. So that's the other thing. The softer you pick with your right hand, the less effort you need with your left hand. Now, if I take that point where it starts to buzz, but it's not buzzing, and I back deeper into the fret towards the nut, it starts to buzz. It requires more effort when you're further from the fret wire. So you want to be right behind the fret wire for minimal effort. You could do that with a chord as well. Let's say a G major chord. Right? Like, how soft can I press this chord? Starting to buzz, not buzzing. Right? Okay. Then, you could do different dynamic exercises. Like, let's say you're practicing a scale. Like the G major scale, one octave. So what I'm going to do is play it as soft as possible. I'm going to play it five times. I'm going to think of five levels of volume. Volume one, two, three, four, five. One is super quiet. And I'm going to go through it five times. One, two, three, four. kind of five levels of volume, right? Now you want to do the same thing when you're learning a hard riff. Let's say there's this riff, it goes like this. Okay, so I have a tendency when I start working on a hard riff, I, there's a lot of tension, you know. And then I get, right? But I'm gonna to try to play it as soft as possible. Another thing is you want to think, when can I use a hammer-on or a pull-off? That means less effort in the right hand, right? So this is only three picks, one, two, three, and six notes. 
pull off. Lots of hammer-ons and pull-offs, right? And that's something you can practice just on a single string. Practice your hammer-on pull-off. Right, so I do one pick, I get three notes. Alright, my third tip is rhythm is everything. That's a statement, not a tip, but it's something to always keep in mind that the top musical element that everyone at all levels relates to that's most important is rhythm. Rhythm is the glue that binds together musicians uh, with each other, with the audience. The beat, the underlying beat and the adherence to that beat is the unspoken contract that we all have as listener and performer. It's this this heartbeat, this pulse. I mean, let's think about it. It's, it's part of just being alive, right? The heart, even when the heart gets fast, it doesn't do so in an instant. It ramps up. It's always following this metronome. The dial might turn slightly, but there's no... If your heart skips a beat or something like that, that's called a palpitation and it makes you dizzy and it's uncomfortable, right? So... I really think there's just a, a biological element to this. So here in Austin, Texas, I play in a wedding band, corporate event, party band. And uh, I pl I'm lucky enough to play with some of literally like the best, best musicians in Austin, Texas. Like I feel, sometimes I feel like an imposter. Like I'm literally playing with the best guys around. And I'm not flashy. I'm not a shreddy player. But one thing I feel that I'm good at is keeping good time, fitting into the pocket, playing chords at the right time, playing notes at the right time, just adhering to the beat. If you do that, everyone will be really happy to listen to you and play with you. But if you're not doing that, everything falls apart and it's really uncomfortable for everyone. So if you're learning a song, a lot of times what I see with people that are learning alone in their bedroom is they are sort of locked into the rhythm in one part and they just keep going through the song to the end and the whole thing is not fully locked in. Try to lock in as step one to anything you play, no matter what the tempo. So whatever it is you're learning, you wanna understand the rhythm of the song or of the phrase. You wanna really understand the placement of that rhythm even if you have to play it really slow. The truth is, if you can place rhythm over a beat at a really slow tempo, that is helping you develop your time more than a fast tempo. Anyone could feel rhythm at this tempo. Let's say there's a rhythm that goes da 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 At this tempo, da 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 Easy, if I go like this, now I've gotta go. Da, 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 da. That's harder. If I slow it down even more. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right? It gets harder and harder at slower tempos. But once you're able to place them at slower tempos, placing rhythm at a fast tempo is easy. It might be more difficult technically, but good time is, is more internal than it is external. So always be working on your time. So let's say there's a riff. Da, 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 da. Now, another thing I did is I vocalized it. One of the best ways to learn rhythm is to vocalize it first. So let's say there's a song riff goes. There's that rhythm. Ba, ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, da. So before even worrying, it, worrying about how to play it, Da, 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 da. Can you hum it? Then what is the underlying beat? Can you either tap your foot or snap your fingers while doing that? Now that was kind of a rough riff to play. So let's slow it down to a speed where you might be able to play it, which maybe it's, it's this. Okay, so now what's the underlying beat? 
Now, me saying the rhythm at the same time, if you could do that, that's really good. That's really challenging. I used to be a school teacher, so I got kind of good at that. But just the beat, ba, 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 ba. Try with the foot. One, two, three, four. Right? Every part of that riff happens at an exact moment. So the riff fits in the grid. There's this rhythmic grid. You want to get to know this rhythmic grid. In quarter notes, it's one, two, three, four. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four. Sixteenth notes, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So there's this grid and we could keep breaking it into smaller pieces. Typically things are either, you know, whole notes a note that takes up four beats, half notes, two beats, quarter notes, one beat, eighth notes takes up two per beat, 16th notes, four per beat, triplets, three per beat. Some of these are popular, so you wanna get to know the rhythmic grid. Look up the rhythmic grid. This riff goes one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, three, right? So when I hear it, I'm not thinking about it consciously, but I'm aware, I have an awareness. I kind of feel the grid and I feel the riff over the grid and I could keep the beat and play the riff over it. Boom, 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 boom. So anything you're learning, nail that rhythm, nail the rhythm first and foremost, really lock into the time, ride the wave of that beat, of that tempo, work with metronomes, use metronomes if you have to. If you can't use a metronome, if you have problems locking in with a metronome, that means you definitely need it. If you put on a metronome and you lock in immediately and it's no problem, then maybe you don't need it. Maybe you've, you've kind of like kind of grown enough in your rhythm that you you really have internalized the metronome. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you wanna learn more about playing guitar, head over to guitartricks.com. There's sequential courses on guitar fundamentals, rock, blues, country, a library of high quality song lessons, a guitar toolbox, and so much more. Happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson.